Hey guys, it's Ellie and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm telling you guys about 10 ways you can improve your relationship with your money within less than a month. I know that your relationship with finances are built over several years, but if you take my tips, I hope that they'll help you in getting to a better situation if you are not there already. And if you are good with your money already, even then I hope that you find some good tips from today's video. So without any further ado, let's get started. By the way, two books that I really loved and I would highly recommend for finances. Number one, personal finances in 20s and 30s. I read this as an audiobook. And then Master Your Money, Master Your Life. I read this as a paperback. Both these books were very effective in helping me with my perspective on money. And if you want to read some books, I'll leave the links to both of these in the description below. The first thing that you need to do when you want to be good with your money is to know exactly what your situation with money is right now. Unless you know your situation, how much money you have, how much money you owe, how much debt you have, what are your financial goals that you are going to be aspiring towards and does your current financial situation actually correspond to it or is there a big gap between the two? Just knowing your situation is like half the work done. Most people don't even check their bank accounts and total net worth regularly. And that is extremely important. This is something that I have noticed that all successful people talk a lot about. Calculating the net worth and calculating how much they have at the beginning of every day. So that they know where exactly they stand financially. And that helps them a lot in assessing their situation and planning the days, months and years. Okay. So number one, know what your situation is. Number two, once you know what your situation is and then you think about what the situation is where you'd like to be at, you start thinking about what you can do to bridge this particular gap. There are so many things that you can do, but the most important thing here is to know the distance of the two, your current financial situation and your dream financial situation, because unless you know this gap, how are you going to work towards achieving your goals, right? So knowing is probably extremely important when it comes to dealing with your finances. Now, number three, there are so many things that you can do to bridge this particular gap. But the best probably to bridge any financial gap, to reach any financial goal is to invest your money. Saving is extremely important, by the way, because unless you save the money, what are you going to invest? But once you have saved the money, you need to know about investments and what are the areas where if you invest, you can get the best returns. There are so many ways to invest your money, low risk and high risk ones. Now, this calls for a very different video altogether, I guess, because investment is such a large topic and even I am learning a lot. I'm only 20 years old and I am pretty happy with the progress I've made so far. So in a nutshell, I can say that if you can take high risks, you can go for shares, stocks, mutual funds. Since these options are very risky, you need to be very careful with these investments. However, if your risk tolerance is high, you can go for these. And if you want to, I would like to introduce you to this app that I've been using called Upstocks. Upstocks is an app for trading online. And if you are skeptical about making money online or investing online, Maybe you should give up stocks a try because Ratan Tata himself is an investor. It is extremely trustworthy. Play Store has extremely high ratings for this app and it has like 1 million plus downloads. So something says that this app is pretty amazing. Opening a DMAT account on Upstocks is absolutely free. So that's where you save a lot of money as well. And making an account and starting trading is also extremely easy. You just need to enter PAN card details and it is extremely trustworthy once again. So don't worry about it. You can get benefits of up to rupees 28,000 on Upstocks and you also get brokerage credit. So there's a lot of ways by which you can save money while investing. While you get started with investing, I feel that Upstocks is the best app that you can use right now and if you want to i'll leave a link in the description below just click it and download the app from play store and let me know about your experience as well but make sure that whenever you're investing you do good research on your own about the shares stocks or mutual funds that you're investing with because it is extremely important to do research like don't blindly do anything make sure that you take charge of the things that you're doing however talk to people i have seen that talking to elder people 
helps a lot in investments and for people who don't want to take a lot of risk you can go for fixed deposits fixed deposits pay around six to seven percent interest per year on an average and i hope that if you don't want to take risk this is a way that you can try to invest money to beat inflation or just reach your money goals the next thing you can do to get better with your money is to find out alternatives to your costly desires and things that you maybe want to buy or want to have experiences of if you have things in your life that cost you a lot of money to make you happy, maybe you should lower them down or decrease that in order to save a lot of money. Now, I'm not saying that stop following your passion or stop doing things that make you happy. However, I am saying that try to see if happiness costs you too much money. I've always been a believer of the fact that happiness shouldn't cost you much money and while there are going to be a few things in life which will obviously always cost you money and which will obviously make you happy as well try to lower that okay there are so many things that i have in life which don't cost me any money but make me extremely happy maybe reading a book okay i know that i buy books but books are something that you can also lend and go and read at libraries so it's not something that is inherently costly However, there are so many hobbies out there which can get extremely costly and I guess cooking is one of them because I have recently started cooking and uh, sometimes the ingredients do cost a lot of money. Another hobby that I adopted was having plants okay and that also costs very less provided that I'm not buying extremely expensive plants okay. So there are alternatives to all your costly desires. If there is some particular food that you really love to have, which also costs you a lot of money, maybe you should try finding out alternatives. By the way, I have found this really, really good tea stall near my home. And there are so many days when I, when I just go there and it just costs me 10 rupees and it makes me so happy to have some tea and a couple of biscuits there. They make beautiful biscuits. Okay. Without deviating from the topic, the next thing that you need to do to get better with your money is to know what your spending triggers are. Are they emotional? Are they physical? Make sure that you know about yourself more than your money first because you are the person who decides where your money goes, right? So when you have triggers now my triggers will be probably there's this one particular shop in my area every time i go there i spend more than i usually do at shops so because of their collection okay they have some really really great things so what i started was i stopped going there <laughs> i stopped going there altogether for months so that i don't spend money okay there are also some dining places and places where i used to eat at previously which used to cost me a lot of money and while i did enjoy that back then i just stopped going to those particular areas because unless i'm in the area i would probably not enter the place where i used to eat at so that helped me a lot in reducing my trigger also one of my triggers is getting extremely sad and while i can do nothing to control that i do try to control what comes afterwards so instead of going on retail therapy i try to do things that will make me creative or just give me an outlet to stop being sad instead of using money and shopping as a source to stop being sad now i never had this extreme on an extreme level but i do know friends who spend like thousands of rupees when they are sad upset or heartbroken and uh, this is something that if you suffer from you really need to work on if you want to get better with your money the next tip will be to read books on finances let me know if you want a video on my channel exclusively dedicated to finance books because i have read a lot of them and i hope that i can help you out again there are two books that I recommended in the very beginning of this video. For women, by the way, I also recommend this book called Money Order. I really loved it. Now, the thing is, when you read books about money, you understand what others, other people's perspectives and experiences with money have been. If you make money mistakes, which you obviously will in your life, that's great. But there are only so many mistakes that you can make without having an extreme impact in your life right so when you read books you don't start from zero experience you start from some experience obviously your experience is going to be different from the author's experience but it does help a lot there's so much that i'm talking about in today's video and so much that i have applied in my life in the past two years that has helped me make more money learn about investing and i am pretty happy with the situation i'm at at the age of 20 and that is for, to a great extent because I read these books if I had followed whatever I had known in my life uh, so far I probably wouldn't even have been making the money that I'm making right now and even if I was I probably wouldn't have been saving and investing as much because I grew up in a middle class family where these things are never very much talked about so let me know in the comments below if your parents or anyone in your life educated you on your finances before you were 18 
that is really something that I would love to know. And yeah, just read books so that you can expand your knowledge that you have on money and then apply it and get better with it. The next tip will be to have a rule of saving. There are so many saving rules and investing rules. The most popular one being 50 by 30 by 20 rule. If you don't know what it is, 50% of whatever you make should go towards your needs, the extremely important things that you need to buy. 30% should go towards your wants, the things that you desire but don't really need in your life. And 20% should go towards saving. This is the 50, 30, 20 rule. Now the thing is, I do not agree with this rule because I'm not the kind of person who thinks it's justified to spend 30% of someone's uh, salary on the things that they want. Okay, like it's not even that important. I'm probably a person who wants 10% to this. Also, I'm not a person who needs to spend 50% on needs because I don't really have my own family yet. So there's not a lot of expense that I need to be of. You are someone who has their own family. Maybe just 50% for needs is going to be a bit less for you. So you can customize it according to yourself. And since I love saving so much, I try to save as much as I can. So this 50 by 30 by 20 rule becomes 10 by 10 by 80 rule for me. So you can customize this according to yourself. And this is one tip that I'll give you. Never blindly follow any rule that you read in any book. Customize it always according to your situation because that is extremely important. Whoever has written the book or written the rule, they have their own experience and I love and respect that. However, you need to build your own. Yes, I got the idea of dividing the percentages from this particular rule, but I don't agree with the numbers given here. The next tip will be a very basic tip and that is to have a budget. Just guide your money where it should go. Last tip that I'll give you guys is not to fall victim to advertising. Advertising is amazing. It makes us feel like we need all these things to be happy. We need all these things to give us pleasure. And these are the things which are going to make our lives easier. But most of the times we don't even need those things. And we are just being made to want things that we don't even need. So make sure that you know what your needs exactly are and not get swayed by advertising now it's not gonna work every time okay but only if you're a bit more aware of yourself and the advertising industry a bit more it'll make you a much better customer and much better with your money so yeah that is it for today's video guys if you want to download the app upstocks the link will be in the description below give me a big thumbs up if you like this video let me know in the comments below about what are the things that you do to get better with your money i'll be back with another video next week till then bye bye